Hello, everyone, and welcome to ConnectEd 2020, a virtual conference. The mission of ConnectEd is to empower future-ready teaching and future-ready skills. My name is Benjamin Kelly, and this is my session. You can find me on Twitter at BBTNB. Before we begin today, there are a few things I'd like to point out. If you have questions during this session, I do encourage you to use the Q&A button. We're going to try to answer those live in real time when you have questions. But if you want to hold on to your questions until the end, there'll be about 10 minutes at the end of this session to actually answer questions. This session is being recorded and you'll have access to this recording on the conference portal for next year whenever you want on demand. And finally, this session has been closed captioned and you can turn that feature on in the bottom right hand corner of the media player. Now. Let's begin. Welcome to Gaming Worth Framing, engaging and empowering students with Minecraft Education Edition. My name is Ben Kelly, and I'm a STEM teacher in Anglophone East School District of New Brunswick, Canada. Today, I'm going to be sharing the why, why of Minecraft, the big why of why we use Minecraft Education Edition in our classrooms and why we should embrace Minecraft Education Edition in our classrooms. This is intended to reinforce teachers and schools who are already using this powerful tool, but also for teachers, school administrators, and IT decision makers who may be seeking further encouragement to begin using Minecraft Education Edition in their school systems. Welcome to Gaming Worth Framing. Let's get to the bottom of why Minecraft Education Edition is perfect for future ready learning. This legendary quote by Jody Asbel Clark is simply jaw-dropping. It's amazing. It explains why teachers bring gaming into the classroom environment, gaming in general. So she says, we're not trying to turn your students into gamers. We're trying to turn your gamers into students. Powerful, absolutely amazing quote. However, it leaves us with some questions. For instance, how many of our students are gamers? How often do they play games? How many specifically play Minecraft? Let's dive into my only slide with statistics to answer a few of these. And I promise this is the only slide in the whole session with some statistics. But it's to support this beautifully um, written and said quote. Okay, so I promise this is the only slide with stats. Check this out. Way back in 2011, that's almost a decade ago, the NDP research group found that a whopping 91% of school kids, school kids were playing video games regularly. That's 64 million American students alone were playing video games on a regular basis from ages 2 to 17. Now, do you think that's more or less in 2020, almost a decade later? Do you think more kids are playing video games today or less? I'm going to tend to lean on the side of more, but until that research comes out, we can just keep guessing. Well, in 2019, this same research group found uh, a different study. They found that year after year, one third of the kids are playing more video games than they did the previous year. So now they're so engaged by these video games that they're actually playing more of them in the following year. So kids are engaged by video games. This is not going to make the newspaper in the morning. Uh, the, the, we we kind of guess this, that kids love video games. What percentage of your students in your classrooms would you say are engaged by your learning experiences? Would you say it's 90%? Would you say it's higher than 90%? If you think that 90% of your students in your classroom are engaged by your learning experiences, give yourself a pat on the back. You are as cool and as awesome and as engaging as a video game. Good work. Well done. Check out the Minecraft stats, just the Minecraft stats alone. There's 126 million active monthly users on Minecraft. That means there's 126 million people per month who come in and build and create and use Minecraft every single month. That's just astonishing. So what we've established through these stats and what supports Jody's quote is we know that video games engage kids, but it's obvious that Minecraft is a dominating player in this engagement market. Um, so much so that we might have to actually start looking at bringing it into our classrooms and we have started to bring it into our classrooms to use as a learning tool. It is that engaging. 
let's move on, see if there's any other reasons why Minecraft really helps in our classroom. The number one consideration at every level of education, from the government all the way down to the classroom teacher, is student safety. Student physical safety, student mental safety, student safety dominates everything. It is the first concern. And you know what's neat about this is it's the first concern of Minecraft Education Edition as well. Um, so why choose Minecraft Education Edition over other choices? Why embrace and encourage teachers in your school system to use this one solution when there's so many others out there? Well, it turns out there's a few reasons um, why you should consider using Minecraft Education Edition over some of the others. Nothing simple, not even playing a game in your classroom anymore. And student safety is the number one concern. You need to be aware of other options and you need to be aware of lookalikes. Um, some of these lookalikes and other options are free, so anyone that handles the money in the school system would be quick to choose that option, but it comes at a much higher cost. In New Brunswick, there is a game, uh, there, sorry, there is a game worldwide um, that looks and operates very similar to Minecraft. It's free, and to the untrained eye, you couldn't tell the difference. The problem is, in New Brunswick, Canada, we had to ban this other game uh, pr province-wide, provincially, um, for many security reasons, including open global chat. We simply can't have our students using unmonitored open global chat with the entire world. And that's just one reason that this lookalike other option had to be blocked province-wide. So be careful when you're looking at cost of things and similarities, because certain things may be free, but they also come at a much greater risk. So what does Minecraft Education Edition do to step up in this area, this most important area? Well, there's a whole bunch of things, things that I don't even know, um, you know, the server side stuff and things like that. But I can tell you the in-game steps that the, that the uh, game has taken to really step up. So number one, every official lesson and every official experience is reviewed in Seattle by a team to make sure that it's school appropriate and students safe. So nothing goes on the website without being reviewed. Number two, all text, all communication in the game is text-based. So there is no audio chat. There's no one on a microphone saying things that we can't track. And the best thing about text-based communication is it's screen, uh, you can screen capture it. You can capture it and it stays in the log long enough to capture it and review it. Um, so if anything's said that's out of sorts, it can be, take a uh, picture can be taken of it, it can be captured. The chat is local, it's within the game. So if you have 30 kids playing in a game, they're the ones that are chatting. There's no outside chats coming in from somewhere in Germany uh, or somewhere else in the world. It is a chat that is local and housed in that game. There's no guns, there's no blood, there's no nudity, and there's certainly no adult themes in Minecraft Education Edition. There's no inappropriate player skins as well. So there's no one wearing uh, less than suitable clothing on their skin. Everything is controlled, but everything is secured in that same aspect. If you're a teacher and you're worried about younger kids, for instance, you want, don't want them to get hurt or you don't want to scare them, there are toggle switches built into the game where you can turn off player damage so no one gets injured. You can turn off monsters. You can turn off dangerous items like TNT. And just with a simple switch, you can make the game secure and safe for whatever student group you're using it with. So safety is our first priority. Next, universal design for learning. If this is a commercial for Minecraft Education Edition, this is also a commercial for universal, universal design for learning. It's a way to better um, create a learning experience for everybody, leaving nobody out. It's founded in student voice and choice, and it creates a learning environment where all students feel they can succeed instead of just the few that are used to succeeding or targeting the ones that aren't succeeding and leaving the ones that are used to succeeding out. Let's take a look at Universal Design for Learning, starting with a cartoon that I think will really make sense. So there's a school custodian on the steps of a school and he's shoveling off the steps. So the child in the wheelchair says, sir, could you please uh, shovel off the ramp? The custodian replies very quickly, I'll get to the ramp when I'm done with the steps because these kids are waiting for the steps. 
And of course, the kids waiting for the steps, they say uh, kindly, you know, sir, if you shoveled off the ramp, we all could use it. It's a much better solution. So start thinking of your classroom that way. Start thinking about how you can shovel off the ramp instead of the steps so that all kids can benefit more quickly and find success quickly. Universal design for learning in your classroom can create an environment where everybody thrives. But how does Minecraft Education Edition help? How, how does Minecraft fit into this amazing way to restructure the way your classroom works? Let's take a look. So think of universal design for learning as a three-legged stool. And we all know what happens when one leg of the stool goes missing. The entire system fails, the entire support system fails. So there's three pillars as well for universal design for learning. The first pillar is we need to provide multiple means of engagement for students. Well, that previous slide where we saw some statistics there, we saw how engaging video games were. So we know that by adding video games to your program, you've definitely increased the engagement and the flexibility of your program to engage the students. Multiple means of action and expression. Well, consider this, consider adding Minecraft to your program and maybe in a math class, certain students are using manipulatives while others are using Minecraft to demonstrate their understanding of certain principles in math. Minecraft is just another way for students to work toward showing you their understanding. Multiple means of representation is the last one. This is where Minecraft really shines. Don't be shocked if 75% or more of your students choose Minecraft as their method for representing their knowledge and understanding. Minecraft allows you to converse and talk about your builds, but more importantly, do colorful walkthroughs using Flipgrid screen capture that just came out. You could use colorful walkthrough videos to show your understanding. This is where Minecraft will really shine in adding another way that students can represent their understanding. If you provide students with voice and choice, then Minecraft Education Edition is a priceless solution and addition for your programming. There are a lot of other sessions at Connect Ed focusing on social and emotional learning, empathy skills, and the like. I am not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I will deflect to those fuller and uh, more in-depth sessions on SEL. However, I do want to point out that uh, Minecraft Education Edition is super strong in the area of building these skills that we're yet to truly appreciate as being important. And I think I have a few slides coming up here that will really drive home how important some of these skills are. We're looking for kids with confidence, we're looking for kids with empathy, and we're looking for an inclusive school environment. Um, how can a video game build student confidence? Can a game really build empathy skills? Why do we need to graduate empathetic students anyway? Does Minecraft Education Edition really focus on inclusion? These are just some of the questions that I hear and uh, some of the questions that I'll attempt to answer here. Remember, the goal is why Minecraft Education Edition? Let's start with inclusion. All right, better together, inclusive gameplay. So Minecraft is truly better when we're all together, but everyone involved has to feel welcome and confident in order for the game to be a success. So let's take a, th a look at some things that Minecraft does to increase inclusion in the game. If safety is the number one concern at Minecraft Education Edition, I would say inclusion is the secondary concern. So both player and NPC, non-player skins, are diverse. They're creative, they're fun, but they're also diverse. Take a look at the pictures. There's roughly 30 languages and dialects supported in the game. So this is a global solution. This is not just for the west coast of Canada. This is everyone, dialects within countries and 30 different languages are supported by the game. Text-to-speech is incredible. It's a solution that allows anything text-based in the game to be read out loud to players as they play. Now you may be thinking this is for your lower uh, literacy skilled players, but it's not. It's annoying sometimes to have to read messages from your friends as you're building. So if you turn this feature on, you become a much more efficient builder. As the text messages pour in, a computerized voice reads them to you and you can respond to the ones that you actually want to respond to without taking your eyes off the zombies or the building. 
There's adjustable button size and sensitivity, so everything's adjustable to your liking, uh, so making each player have their own settings. There's up to 30 players in the game, which is absolutely incredible. Nobody is left out in this setting with 30 players in the game. Nobody feels left out. All right, all you lefties, let me hear it. Let me hear you cheer. There is a lefty mode, a simple switch that switches things to lefty mode, and our most creative builders among us are cheering because lefty mode is in the game, and that is a significant portion of your classroom that don't have to adopt for the right-handed world or adapt for the right-handed world. There's customizable keyboards, controllers, and touch controls. Just look at the options there. Forget the customization. There's keyboards, controllers, and touch control inputs options for your students. That's incredible. And then finally, for the younger learners in, in your classrooms who aren't able to use keyboards, there's an iPad version of the game, which is golden for students, and it gets them started on an engaging journey. There's one thing I haven't mentioned about inclusion that I'd like to mention, and it deserves its own slide. Immersive Reader is the crown jewel of inclusivity. It's, it's everything that a struggling reader would be looking for, but if we're looking for inclusion and if we're looking for UDL, it's a solution that helps everybody. In immersive Reader is a simple button that's built into your NPCs or signs or anything text-based in the game, and it will read text to the characters. It will actually read text, sorry, to the players at different speeds, with different voices, in different fonts, broken into syllables, identifying the parts of speech if you want it, and even a picture dictionary which shows pictures of the words for our lowest literacy learners, the ones who are really struggling, the ones that want to see a picture and maybe use it to help them read a little better. Now, the real gem is, are you a teacher of a second language? Do you teach French immersion in Canada? Are you a Spanish teacher in the United States? Are you in a European country that has a secondary language? You can actually build a lesson in that secondary language for students. And if the students are really stuck, if the ones who, uh, if there's students who are really struggling with that secondary language, they can go into Immersive Reader and with the click of a button, they can translate the entire conversation into the language of their choice helping them quickly figure out what the NPC, for instance, was trying to say. Um, but the beautiful piece of this is not the translation. It's the fact that it will be read to the students at their own pace, with their own fonts, for instance, and it demonstrates proper pronunciation. So you can hear how the French is read and hear how to say certain words. So even by just listening to the NPC, the immersive reader read the French, for instance, Students are picking up how to say certain words correctly. It's just a beautiful solution. It is the crown jewel of inclusivity, and it is in Minecraft Education Edition waiting for our players. Sticking with SEL, um, social emotional learning, there are other sessions on this. Uh, I really encourage you to go check out the session from Minecraft Education Edition, uh, I believe on the Mindful Night. Um, it's, it's incredible. I just want to touch on these two resources. Uh, there's two very popular resources on the Minecraft Education website, and they both embrace the idea of empathy and mindfulness. The Mindful Night teaches students uh, mindfulness, and it gets them to look inward uh, for their own feelings and outward to assist others. Um, it's really cool. It's all about mindfulness, and it's worth checking out if you're a teacher that wants to communicate mindfulness and teach mindfulness in your classroom. The Extreme Minecraft Makeover Home Edition presents eight Minecraft families who have suffered school-appropriate hardships. Let's just say they've gone through a hard time, maybe a mine explosion. And it asks the students to follow some needs and wants of the family to create them a dream home. It's based on the home and garden television show Dream Home Makeover, where the whole community comes out to help build a dream home for a family. Now, the cool thing about this is while your students are actually doing these, they're thinking about others. Um, in most cases, they're thinking about others instead of themselves, and you're practicing that empathy, you're practicing that mindfulness, and it, it's building through practice using the game. Uh, Microsoft has two other amazing um, tools that can uh, build empathy and they can build uh, mindfulness. 
Um, the first one is Flipgrid and the second one is Skype. Uh, those two are really powerful with building mindfulness, uh, both internal thoughts and feelings, and of course, building that empathy for others. But I'm just a teacher. I just teach in New Brunswick. I'm just a school teacher in a grade six to 12 classroom. I am hardly an expert on empathy and why it's essential. Um, so it could be easy to overlook everything I've just said and say, well, that's nice, but uh, let's hear from the experts. So I brought in some experts, just a few. Uh, you might have heard of them, maybe not, but I think you'll be impressed with what they have to say. So let's see what they have to say. <clears throat> so wait a minute, this guy's another teacher. I just got done saying I'm a teacher and I brought in another teacher. Jack Ma left his English teaching career to become the co-founder of the Alibaba Group, now valued at $460 billion. He is China's richest man. Look at what he says. He says, I find that women think about others more than they think about themselves. I feel proud that more than 34% of senior management are women. I would say this is our secret sauce of the company. So I don't wanna argue with Mr. Ma and I don't want to uh, challenge him because he is China's richest man and he's got a proven track record. But what I want us to think about for a second is is he talking about women or is he talking about empathetic people? If you look at the first sentence of his quote, he says they think more about them, uh, others than they do themselves. I would argue that it's empathetic people that are the secret sauce of his company. Women just happen to be proportionally much better at this secret sauce uh, over time, so he's right there. But empathetic people are the secret sauce of Alibaba's success. But that's in China. So that's Jack Ma, China's richest man, a teacher who is now China's richest man. Um, let's go back home. Let's go to uh, North America a little more and find if there's anyone else that can echo those. Okay, wait a minute. So Microsoft CEO is a huge empathy promoter. All right. Um, these leaders of hugely successful companies realize that empathy makes a difference. So let's see what he has to say. The value that I really... Uh, learned to appreciate deeply, in which I talk about a great deal, is empathy. I don't think it is simply a nice to have, but I believe it's the center of the agenda for innovation here at Microsoft. Wow, the center of innovation at Microsoft. Okay, great. So there's another shout out for empathy in schools, but he continues further with one of the most powerful things I've heard. Check this out. He says, I'm not even claiming that empathy is innate. It is something that needs to be developed. Empathy is a muscle, so it needs to be exercised. Well, there's a giant call out to every classroom teacher out there in K-12 education and even beyond that empathy is something that needs to be exercised. I just got done showing you two incredible mindfulness and uh, empathy resources for Minecraft Education Edition. I've been singing its praises, saying that can, it can help. And here's Microsoft CEO saying that we need to graduate. We need people who have practiced empathy along the way. So again, along with Flipgrid and Skype, Microsoft has some incredible tools that exercise empathy every single day. And I really encourage, if you don't dive into Minecraft Education Edition, that you dive into one of the other two and start building that empathy. So. We've moved away now, if you haven't noticed, we've moved away from engaging into empowering. And empathy is one of those first skills that empower students. Coding, coding, coding. We've heard it now for almost a decade, I'm sure, that this is the language of the future. And it's gonna be needed in every career. Along with empathy, coding empowers our students. We've got them engaged, we've already had them engaged, and you've seen that from the video games that uh, we provided voice and choice and video games, they're engaged. Let me show you a, or tell you a tale about how I empowered my class with coding in Minecraft Education Edition. So my son got me to write Minecraft Education years ago uh, before the agent came along. Uh, he's an only child and he got me to write the company and ask for a little quote unquote a little robot friend in the game that he could tell to do stuff. Well, needless to say, he takes full credit for the agent, which appeared a year later, I think. Um, he's a not so secret agent. This little uh, wonder worker can be programmed using uh, blocks, 
Java, and now Python. Um, you can start simple with tutorials. You can build a hut, smaller things, but then you can make the impossible possible. So I want to show you uh, another quote. It's the shortest quote you'll ever see, um, but it means a lot to me, and I'll explain why. So there's the quote. That's impossible, Mr. Kelly. And it's attributed to a soon-to-be astonished student in Canada. So let me explain this. By now, the hour of code is a staple in everybody's December. But it only lasts for an hour. So that, thanks a lot. And you, of course, you can get the kids to do it again and again. But after that hour of code, I'm left with a whole bunch of weeks in December where I'm wanting to continue the coding endeavor. So this is my hour of code extension that I do annually with Minecraft Education Edition. And depending on your religious beliefs and tolerances, it involves bringing Christmas or winter to the nether. I pitched this mission to my grade seven students and from the back of the room, the biggest boy stood up and yelled, that's impossible, Mr. Kelly, you can't do that. He took his shot, that was his moment, but he didn't realize that the power of coding was waiting. I replied, it was impossible until we learned how to code. Students program candy canes, large presents, Christmas trees, and they fly around the nether, turning the bleak, hot environment into snow and ice-filled paradise. Festive, eh? So as you can see in the pictures there, the nether is on the left. It is a basically a lava and heat and burning environment that's very hot. And using some simple code uh, that I've demonstrated in the second picture, you can fly around the nether and replace all of the brimstone and the horrible uh, hotness with some snow and some ice and build hockey rinks and uh, candy canes. And it really is a festive experience and it shows the power of coding immediately to the students because as he pointed out, that was impossible to do. I'd like to wrap up today with assessment. It is a part of our job. It is the part of our job that the public is concerned about, other than safety, and it's the part of our job that um, the government is concerned with, for sure. Assessment has almost forever been product-based. It's been based on the products that students create. Uh, if you are aware of triangulation of data, um, you are gonna get to see how Minecraft Education Edition thrives in this environment. If you're not aware of triangulation of data, you are in for an absolute treat. Uh, this will really make you think twice about how you assess moving forward and could be the one takeaway that you take from this uh, entire session. So let's begin with triangulation of uh, data for assessment, observations, conversations, and products. Beautiful quote. Um, that sums up this a uh, little more. Stories give life to data and data gives authority to stories. So we are so used to collecting data, 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 and we are so used to using it and reporting data, but the stories often go missing. It's the stories that are left on the classroom floor. So what I want you to consider moving forward is that it's not all about the data. The stories are just as important as the actual numbers and results. So this will make even the most hardcore spreadsheeters heart grow three sizes, what we're about to talk about. Minecraft has a whole bunch of wonderful tools built into the game to help with products, students making products. There are signs, slates, posters, boards, selfie cameras. There's portfolios to hold the selfie pictures and there's even a book and quill for answering the in-game questions or writing an adventure journal, for instance. But Minecraft is so much more than these tools for products. Those are just for making products that can be submitted to the teacher. There is nothing more that a student likes in life than talking about their Minecraft build. In some cases, it's the kids you never hear from, the ones who don't have a voice and they boom with confidence as they explain why they added certain aspects to their build and why they didn't add certain aspects. Let's look beyond products with Minecraft Education Edition and assessment in general.
Triangulation of data provides three valuable assessment streams for teachers. Sandra Herps and Ann Davies have done a mountain of work in this area. And as you can see, products are joined by two other valuable data streams, observation and conversation. Obviously, the products still dominate the final standings, and we can argue all day long about how we weigh these three different streams of data. But conversations and observations, every single time you boot up Minecraft Education Edition, there's an infinite supply of both of those streams. They can really provide teachers and students with new insights. They can build better relationships and they can make a world better than the product dominated assessment world that we've come to know. How would you increase your formal and informal conversations and observations to benefit your students? I can tell you that, tell you that using Minecraft, what you can do is while the students are in Minecraft, use that time to have conversations. Ask the students about why they're building certain things, how they would build a difficult concept. Talk to them, play with them, observe from across the room how they work with each other. May not be, it may not be in your curriculum document, but you're going to be an amazing teacher when parent-teacher interviews roll around and your report card comments will be that much richer for everyone. You will fully understand how your students are doing compared to just marking products. Consider empowering your students by involving them in the triangulation of data. Uh, it will only empower them further. And you can see along with empathy and coding and assessment, these are the steps you can take using Minecraft Education Edition and great teaching to empower your students to become better and thrive in your learning environment. So in, re in the recap of the day, uh, why should we embrace Minecraft Education Edition and why do we? Well, these are just seven reasons, seven great reasons that we do. There's probably 70 more. But the first one was you can empower your gamers to thrive as students. Remember, the gamers are coming into your classroom. How do we turn them into students? Student safety is first priority within the game and within our system. What a great match. Minecraft is flexible and it supports universally designed learning environments. It actually supports all three legs of the stool. Minecraft Education Edition uh, supplies rich social and emotional learning. Um, it's all possible. And again, I encourage you to go check out those, those other sections. Progressive coding education. Start with blocks. Move on to Java and Python. There's a whole platform you can use here and a whole growth trajectory that you can use with coding education within this engaging game. It complements triangulation of assessment for sure because those observations and conversations are rich when using Minecraft in the classroom. And every single update, this resource gets better and better. There are teams in Sweden, there are teams in Seattle, and they are working tirelessly to make each update a better solution, a more flexible solution, and just an enjoyable process for every teacher out there. So what's neat about this session is at the end of this, I get to ask the question to you. Why embrace Minecraft Education Edition? I've shared with you seven different scopes here, seven different reasons, seven different talk throughs, but I'm sure each and every one of you have your reason for why you embrace Minecraft Education Edition or why you will in the future embrace or try to embrace Minecraft Education Edition. You can use what you've learned here to influence your administration, your IT decision makers. These people work in a different world in some cases with the IT decision makers and they're, they're worried about cost and security. Uh, maybe you learned something here today that can influence them to actually open uh, up to Minecraft Education Edition. Uh, give your IT workers and your administration high fives if you're already using Minecraft Education because they have facilitated that and they deserve high fives based on what you just saw. So at this time, I'd like to say thank you for attending this session. Thank you for being interested in Minecraft. Uh, thank you for caring about future ready learning and what tools can help your students and help the students of your province, state and country uh, succeed in the future, uh, be competitive and just be better citizens moving forward. This was Gaming Worth Framing, engaging and empowering students with Minecraft Education Edition. My name is Ben Kelly and 
You can find me on Twitter at BBTNB. There's a few Minecraft resources that I have listed there, uh, all my Minecraft worlds and a flip grid that I'm running uh, with some Minecraft challenges, I guess. And thank you so much for listening. And I will stick around at this point for questions. Yeah.